Welcome to another movie review. So last night I had a choice between watching Hereditary and I started to watch it, then I realised I've seen it! It's just one of these horror films. Horror films are kind of like, um, they all seem to, once one type of horror film is success, then they all kind of copy it. I remember when, um, uh, what do you call it, came out, uh, The Blair Witch Project, everything then became handmade cameras. Right, handheld cameras and all that sort of stuff, and uh, and it was okay. This is the only thing that was scary about that film was the very end where you saw somebody standing in the corner with the back turned. You know, I mean, look at this. Well, no, you're going to just actually just see my backside, so that's 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 actually a different film whatsoever. Um, but uh, but then you get you know these films where you just see things in the in the background, the corner. And stuff, you know, and you. Uh, I mean, it was it was quite eerie when you. The best thing of this new sort of horror films, uh, I think it's on, the haunting or something. Uh, it's on Netflix where the family actually goes and stays, and. And this is it called the haunting. So it's, it's, a, it's a TV series anyway on uh, Netflix and the, the family go and stay in this uh, house that moved into and there's a lot of things that's happening when the during their childhood and their adults and they, I think there's a season two coming out and it's like the ghosts have always been there and there's a secret room upstairs but what really differs from that is it's actually a great wee ending to the series, and I don't know why they're making a season two, but they are. So it's just these ones where it's not like a boo. See, in the eighties, everything was like Freddy, Freddy Krueger, and slashing and blood and hell rays and everything, and you become immune to that sort of stuff. So nowadays, it's more of a what's going on in the background and a wee fake image of a woman. So I started watching it, which was kind of eerie, and it had the wee sort of granny that died, and she's standing there. But then I thought, no, I have seen this film. So then I started to watch uh, Hearts of Atlantis, and then I noticed underneath that it said Stephen King. So I started watching. So I started watching it because uh, I'm. I, I think Stephen King's cool. You know, I like it. Um, but it's. Uh, um, and it started off with okay this. Anthony Hopkins, stars Anthony Hopkins, uh, and I'll put the trailer again in the, in the description below. And it starts off like any Stephen King. I felt like I was watching some sort of remake of Stand By Me. And because it starts off with an adult's going and he's, and he's revisiting his childhood where he grew up. And he's remembering his mother that's always telling bad stuff about his dad. And then he's... Um, uh, but then there's, of course, in every Stephen King film, there's uh, a bully that's kind of like... I mean, hell, we're living in America in, in Stephen King's world because the bullies are really not just ordinary bullies. I mean, they take baseball bats to girls and all that sort of stuff. And it's, it's definitely... <laughs> I mean, he looks a normal guy, Stephen King, but he's, there's a darkness to him, you know? Um... And Anthony Hopkins plays this guy that's got these sort of powers, and I think he, he might have passed it on to the boy and somewhat. And and I, I felt like it, the film was heading towards something. It was heading to towards some sort of great episode in the boy's life, but it, it really just turns out to be another Stand By Me, where you're just going through this period in this boy's life. Uh, he's he he sort of witnessed the little wee bit, you know. He becomes aware of Anthony Hopkins and that he's he's Anthony Hopkins' character can actually sense something in the boy. But there's a goodness in Anthony Hopkins because he opens his eyes to the world that is, and not something that his mum is trying to force upon him. Uh, not see the world through his mother's eyes, but actually see the world as, as it is and gets ready to embrace that. So maybe that is the journey. But as far as as 
I would like to probably read the book up maybe at one point because the film just it didn't feel to pull you in. It was it was great to see this young boy's love of getting a bike and everything else, but it's just I mean it's an old film, so if you haven't seen it, I'm not really spoiling it because he's been out for a while. Because you can tell by the, the young boy, I, I would have to Google the, the boy's name, but he's he's a he's an adult now, you know. So it ha- was done, and Anthony Hopkins doesn't seem to age a lot in these movies. So for me, because I love Stand by Me and stuff like that, I would I would have to give up that sort of score. So read from that what what you will, and as I say, I've, uh, it's it's worth a watch. You know, it's, it's it's I don't think there's there's not much scares in it. There's not much drama. Uh, I would encourage you to watch the film first, then decide to think of if, if it's a. I think it's a film, I would say, yeah, PG-13 or PG-12 or, or something like that. Um, that's okay. Younger kids, no, they'll get restless and everything else. Um, but, yeah, again, at the end of the film, just sort of let me down. It didn't feel like it reached where it was supposed to go to, you know, and... Um, I'd have, I would have loved to find to feel that the film had that sort of ending which was a moral code for you. But maybe that was the moral code that in this small period of the boy's life um, he met a man that that just opened his eyes more. Okay, so let me know what film you want me to review next and I'll see you next time.